you know what? Just like Britney Spears said, I did it again. All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm actually gonna introduce yet another project. Yeah, it's like I really needed another one. Uh, actually I do, uh, because we haven't really touched anything on the channel about what I'm about to show you. It's right behind this door. A very dirty door, but it's right, be right back there. Uh, it does need a little bit of love. Uh, obviously the stuff that we do is not gonna be that fancy, but we're gonna make it better and we're gonna make it work and then we're gonna go on some epic adventures. So this is our next project on Five Lakes Garage. Yes, it's a bass boat. All right, let me introduce you to, I don't know. I tell you what, I need a name for this thing. Make up a name, put it down in the comments. I wanna hear them. And then if you win, I mean, if I choose your name, We'll figure something out. We'll get you something. We'll get you some stickers or something. But anyway, uh, this is like the Blue Bomber, if you will. Uh, it's a 17-footer. It is a Hydra Sport. Oh, I guess it was popular back in the 70s because this is a 1976. That's right. It is 46 years old, but it is in actually really good condition, especially for the age. I do believe it was under shelter for most of its life. Now, I've kind of gone through a little bit of it and made up a list of all the things we need to do to it. Luckily, it is not as long as some of the other ones I saw, but there are a few things that we do need to show it some love. So anyway, let's do a quick tour and show you what we got. We're gonna start right here. All right, we got our self patrolling motor. This is the main reason why you get a bass boat. All right, so you got your foot pedal here, you go, Push it down, goes one way, pull it back the other way. If you want to go forward, that's right, you push the button and it goes. It's awesome. Always remember, disconnect it because you don't want to drain the battery. Um, excuse me, this trolling motor is a 24 volt. Uh, it could run on 12 volt if you had to, but right now we have 24 volts. And so we have two batteries way in the back, which we're going to have to address those here shortly. All right, so this is one of the main reasons why you have a bass boat. You do have these chairs that are on pedestals. You sit here, fish, bringing them in. So it's very comfortable, it's pretty sturdy, and you're floating around. That, and you have a trolling motor, which is awesome. That is foot control. But anyway, uh, some of the things we really need to do with this thing, we got to clean it. Um, it has been sitting out there for a little bit. Most of its life, I believe it's under a carport. Uh, the previous owner probably had it outside, it had a cover on it, I'm sure it leaked. But this is what the floor looks like. Yeah. The good news is, is that I believe it is savable, so we're just gonna hit it with the pressure washer, uh, maybe a little soap, a little bit of water, and we'll kind of figure that one out. Uh, the rest of it's just gonna get waxed and buffed. Uh, the clear coat is actually in pretty decent shape, especially for 46 years old. Um, actually, real quick, uh, the gentleman that I bought it from, Mr. Curtis, I have to say that, that's a straight up dude. You know, I really wanted to haggle with some price, I just couldn't do it. Uh, he was just, he was too honest. He was pretty cool. He was very communicative, communicative, communi he taught, he uh, let me know the situation. Uh, but no, he's an awesome dude. Uh, if you ever see anything that he sells, I probably would jump on it again, only because, he, like I said, he's a pretty cool dude. Okay, back here in the rear, it's probably where I'm gonna spend a lot of my time. So if you open this up, you got two batteries. You got, uh, and these right here are for the trolling motor. Now, if you look at them, they are two different uh, two different types, which we're gonna probably replace these anyway. It says 2015, so that's at least seven years old. Probably doesn't doesn't have much life in it, and I really don't want to be stranded out there. I want to go ahead and get my fishing on. But anyway, I'll probably replace these with some deep cycle uh, marine batteries, and actually, I'm probably gonna f uh, fix up some of the wiring. Some of the wiring is a little bit old. You know, it's kind of looks like it's been charred. A little bit here and there um, so we're gonna re replace all that with some probably some thicker gauge wire um, you also can connect up I guess this would be your trolling motor for back here I'm not sure why that's there but that's gonna go away it does have a new gas tank uh, mr. Um, mr. Curtis go ahead went ahead and put that in there I do have the original one over there uh, eventually later on I might actually just swap it back just to keep it original but right now 
that's gonna look fantastic. All right, so this Mercury right here is a two cycle engine. It's gonna need some oil. Now the main uh, oil feed is actually separate from the fuel tank. So you put gas in it and then it'll automatically feed the engine with oil. Now, uh, Curtis didn't really like that because it was a little bit unreliable. So um, hopefully this guy is not damaged too bad. Um, but basically you just put the oil in the fuel as you're filling it up. You get a little bottle that says, oh, I treat 10 gallons of gas. You put the you put one bottle in there, put in 10 gallons of gas, and then you can keep your ratio just right. Now, this guy here is not the original engine for this boat. If you look on the side here, it says 170 horsepower. This guy is not 170 horsepower. This is only 115 horsepower from 1986. So it is a little bit newer of an engine. Getting parts for it is, mm, should be okay. Uh, like I said, we're gonna take the carburetors, gonna tear them apart, gonna clean them all, all the way out and make sure that they're in there, make sure the floats. I think one of the floats kind of stuck in one of them. It's a little bit leaky, um, but it should be great. Now, one of the things that the previous item, Mr. Curtis actually did with this, which is actually pretty cool in that it, it does work. You put a hydrofoil on it. Not really a hydrofoil, but it, what this is gonna do is when the motor's all the way down and you hit the gas and you're gonna go up on plane, it doesn't wanna, it will actually lay flat as you go. So that's a good improvement. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. All right, so uh, we are over here by the driver compartment. Now, one of the things we need to do is actually work out some wiring. Now, this thing is a 46 year old vessel. It has gone through a couple of different sets of hands and a couple of different sets of people actually going here to wire. Uh, there are some wires that are just kind of hanging. This looks fairly new. I believe uh, Mr. Curtis said that this was for the bilge pump that he put in the rear. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'll check those just to make sure the, the wires are correct and where they're going to go. Um, not that I question them, but I don't really want to know. Uh, but we'll set up a switch up here. Uh, there's also a uh, automatic um, lever that's back here too. So if the water level starts to rise up, it will hit the switch, turn on the pump automatically. Don't have to worry about it. If you want to leave it overnight, it rains a lot, it fills up, boom, it's automatically bilging and you don't have to worry about it. But anyway, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do it with that. Uh, one thing that's awesome, there you go. We got ourselves a fish finder. Because Lord knows when I go fishing, I need all the help I can get. So, so we need to clean it, we need to wire it, we need to get, uh, make sure the batteries are right. We're gonna go ahead and get the engine running properly. The, the trolling motor seems to be working okay, but we're gonna test it out once we actually get it in the water. So let's go over some of the real quick um, features of this boat. So it does have a live well on it. So the live well is in here in the center. You open it up, it's got a pump, it's got a valve, and it will keep circulating the water so that your fish don't, don't die. Now, the good thing is, is that I probably won't be able to use this because I don't, I usually do catch and release. And, but you never know. Maybe one day I'll catch one that I want to eat. But maybe that would be good for uh, ice and beverages. Cold milk, yeah, that's what it is. But the good thing is it's got, it has compartments everywhere. It has, you got your front seat. You got your back seat, you got your driver's seat, and you have your uh, side little booster seat over there. Now, when you're on plane, you're driving around, you don't want to sit out there, you want to sit down here. Safety. But, hey, I got an umbrella. Actually, this is just, I just found it in the boat, and so I figured, why not? Let's put it up. The good thing is, now it's dry, so it's not so moldy. But you do have uh, provisions all the way along the side for your fishing rods. I went ahead and threw some in there because I needed the ambiance of the fishing rods up there. But now the rest of the stuff that I need to do with the boat to actually get it right, or at least get it right in my head, is um, not going to keep us from actually going out and fish. Because as long as it's mechanically working, then the cosmetics can come later. So what we need to do, now all these little storage compartments seem to be in really good shape. Uh, we want to fix the seat, uh, fix the rugs. That back seat over there is a little bit rotty. That's okay. That happens. I've done done plenty of these before. Um, but the actual fabric itself, 
definitely not from the 70s. There's no way that this thing is going to last that long, especially being on a boat. But uh, I think a good cleaning, those things will come out beautiful. The I'm going to go ahead and replace all the ropes because you want to have these nice and sturdy especially if the motor goes out and the trolling motor goes out you run out of batteries you need somebody to tell you you need a good rope to actually get towed all right so uh that pretty much covers the boat itself for the most part there are a lot of different little things that we can mention it does have a trim for the motor in the back you got to trim up to the front you got to trim in the middle and you got to trim all the way in the back that's actually pretty cool um there's also a dip finder right here in the front and there's one right here on the driver's seat uh there is so I have, I guess I have three depth finders, one there, one over there, and one in the fish finder. But like I said, there's compartments everywhere, and we might actually go through some of the compartments and see what exactly Mr. Curtis left us. Uh, hopefully it comes with a fire extinguisher, because those are expensive, uh, kind of help me with price. Uh, also some life jackets, uh, I think flares, whistle, um, all the type of stuff that you need for when you actually take the boat out. Uh, so the game warden does not come and get you, because that will happen. But anyway, uh, now on to the trailer. Now the trailer does need a little bit of love, but it's actually in fantastic shape. I towed it all the way from Benson over to here, which is about a 40 minute ride, and it did pretty good. I think the, the tires are a little bit soft, and might need to pump those up, because they're swaying just a little bit, but that's okay, we're gonna be able to fix that. Um, now I don't know anything about this trailer, at all. I don't know what kind of life it had, I don't know how many miles is on it, but one thing we do need to do is reset the, or repack those bearings. We're going to pull the wheels off, we're going to pull the bearings off, and we're going to actually test them out and see whether or not we need to replace them. If they need to be replaced, guess what? We're going to replace them, and we're going to do it right here on the channel. Um, so, so that needs to be done. Uh, the tires need to be checked. I did check the sidewall. They're back from two, uh, 2006. So they're getting a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, I might go look uh, at getting some new ones uh, because I'll be doing like at least two and a half hour rides with it all the way down to Hereford, North Carolina, because that's where I live go uh, especially when I go fishing also it didn't did not come with a spare but I do believe I gotta check the size but the spare tire for the trailer might actually work maybe I'll grab it and put it on there once I actually pull the tire off see if it worked that would be great because I can have one spare tire for two items I'm only gonna be towing one at a time save money all right I'm gonna go ahead and check all the wiring front to back all the lights do work there is one reflector on this side this will bust it off but that's not a big deal I got some more back in the back throw that up there and we're good on running lights uh, the wiring up front eh. all right so this is the wiring that goes up to the truck now it actually is in pretty good condition except I probably wouldn't have put duct tape on it so what I'll do is get rid of all the duct tape um, I got some heat shrink back in the back that we might throw up there uh, just to protect it, but hey, it all works. I'm not gonna fault them for it. Uh, duct tape is what they had on hand, so that's what they use. Want to protect it, so give them credit for that. Um, I do need to replace the safety chains, uh, only because they are small, and also it doesn't quite fit since I had the lift on the truck and a lowered um, hitch. All right, let's go back further. All right, I might uh, swap out the rope. It actually feels pretty decent, but just to be sure. I'll go ahead and do that. Lube up all your connections. Uh, the other thing that we need to replace would be some of these steps. Um, that one seems to be okay. This one I think will soft. Yeah, that one's soft. That one's pretty much done. So we'll replace those boards. Just got to get some marine gray plywood. So anyway, that's my new project. I'm kind of excited. Uh, once we actually take it out and do an adventure, you'll see it over on Five Lakes ODL, not Five Lakes Garage and so go ahead and go over there and actually uh, subscribe to that so you do not miss it um i just need to get it cleaned up and get it ready so i'm gonna get it out and we're gonna pressure wash it we're gonna take a quick look at it after it gets pressure washed just to see if it's actually worth it or i'm gonna have to do some major scrubbing i don't know but we'll find out but anyway i got a boat all right let's get the pressure washer out i want to get wet I think we're gonna be in good shape. Clean side, dirty side. Just a little pressure washing will actually do you. It's 
a bit of a difference. Still gotta do that side. Obviously, I'm gonna let the water drain out first. It drains out slow. But it does drain. Now, while I was washing around, I did see a couple little things we might need to address later on. It won't be anytime soon. But on this particular side, sorry for the lighting, but there's a few little stre stress cracks on this side. And I believe that's what it is. What it is is that you have darker and then you have lighter and then darker everybody keeps stepping on this to jump off the only problem is that most of the structure underneath is wide open because of this guy here and this actually moves so i think they're just standing on that and to get off now what we can do with this right here is actually sand it down i can put a new coat of uh fiberglass on there and then i don't know if i can be able to match the flake but hey that's what we do we just try to figure it out But anyway, got a lot more to wash than to do. All right, let's keep going. All right, she cleaned up pretty nicely. Still got a little bit of water down there at the bottom, but that's gonna drain out. I might have to spray it one more time just to get the rest of the dirt off. But look at those seats. Still can use a scrubbing. That was a whole lot better. I get more excited every time I look at this thing. Now granted, it was not very expensive. Uh, that's kind of what we do here at Five Lakes Garage. We go for the uh, lower end, trying to make it into the, the higher end. Maybe, perhaps, I don't know. It's a 46 year old boat. How much higher can it go? But a couple of little odds and ends that I did notice that I didn't mention before, they put a stainless steel prop on, which I appreciate because those jokers are not cheap. But anyway, so we're just draining it out pretty well uh so you're probably wondering why am i cleaning it now instead of working on it and getting it ready well i like to work on clean stuff and two i don't have time to work on it right now because i got to get these guys out that's right it's these jet skis they're all my little brothers uh i took weeks to get the connectors in but hopefully i can put the connect the electrical connections on tighten it up make sure there's no leaks or there isn't any leaks uh, maybe get it out of the water just to test it out real quick and then hand them over to Dave so he can actually take it to his his house and get it out of here you know along with that stainless steel prop I did notice something else that actually warms my heart look at them rims they're not 20s they're 14s but I keep them real clean though no uh, actually the what makes that warm to the heart is I actually had the exact same set on my uh, 1985 Toyota Celica. Um, once I put some the wrong cleaner on, destroyed them. By the way, I'm not gonna do that on these. I'm just gonna pressure wash them and let them ride. But anyway, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Same rims that I used to have when I was a kid. Time comes around on you. Anyway, so that's about it for the, uh, the first installment of going to be a really long series with this boat. Check out all the other videos that we're getting ready to make on how we're going to fix it, how we're going to maintain it, how we're actually going to use it, and what we had to do to actually get through it. Now, I might do, uh, I might uh, write up a quick thing of, all right, when you're buying a boat, these are the things you want to look at. If you're selling a boat, these are the things you want to try to fix before you actually sell it. And be like Curtis, and be straight up with people. He's a great dude. So, anyway, uh, we got a lot more stuff coming up soon. I hope, hopefully. Get that engine running because that would be priority number one uh make sure that it runs it runs great uh so that it does not leave us out on the river or else i'm gonna have to call in a jet ski strike and be like hey come tow me home because uh, i don't think my battery is going to be able to last all the way to the shop anyway i'm gonna get the jet skis over to the other bay so i can actually get those things working on tonight and then hopefully work on this thing i think this might be the next thing that we actually work on oh no i forgot I still have to finish the bumper for the taco. This got bumped even further. It'll be all right. We'll get it done one day. Anyway, uh, check out check out all the other videos. Uh, we got more to come. Exciting stuff. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell so you'll know exactly when we're actually sending these off. And also, it helps out the channel. And hey, if you want to comment, please do. I need a name for this thing. And also, go ahead and share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your wife. Share it with your kids. I don't care. As long as you share it. That's how it works. Anyway, take it easy, have fun, keep boating, because I'm getting ready to start boating again. Man, it's been way too long.